Hey guys, it's Ravenhawk6910 reporting once again, and oh boy, this day did not work exactly how I planned it to at all. I initially was going to go down to Legacy Station today and pick up a hand, a actual hard copy of the new Lionel catalog, and uh, check out something that I had in Layaway down there as well, which I'll get to later. And my car died on me randomly. Broke down in the worst possible spot ever in a three-lane road with no shoulder to pull off of. So I had to push it about a half mile to the nearest gas station where I finally was able to get the car restarted and get it taken over to the dealership to get it looked at. So, oh, holy crap. That was my morning. <laughs> so needless to say, I did not get down to Lilburn. But I will worry about that on another day. Besides, right now, I don't need a hard copy of the catalog. I just need to rest. <laughs> but, anyways, it's been several weeks of anticipation, several leaks as well. But here we are at last. The new Lionel 2021 Volume 1 catalog is out. At last. And this is a really good catalog this time around. I'm very excited to talk about my personal highlights from this catalog. But, as always, these are my personal highlights, not yours. So, if you want to see things that you might like more, click the link in the description box below that will take you to the full Lionel 2021 Volume 1 catalog. So, with that out of the way, let's get started with something interesting. There is some Vision Line stuff in this catalog, and it's another reissue, just like they did with the Challengers a few years ago, but it's the Santa Fe 21010 2. So, the first time the 21010 2 has been made since 2009 when it was initially released. So, I was very surprised to see it come back, and I'm very happy to see it come back. There are four road numbers and three different paint schemes. We've got two black ones, a number 3009 and a 3001, with the difference being 3001 has white we has white wheel tires on it and uh, polished rods, whereas 3009 has black uh, wheels and darkened rods. I'm stuttering a bit, so forgive me. <laughs> then we have two fantasy paint schemes. We have the 3005 in what's being called the black bonnet, which is basically the black engine with a little bit of yellow striping along the walkway and the Santa Fe war bonnet on the tender and part of the cab and then the poster child of the run I guess you could say the number 3008 Valley Flyer and I actually really like the Valley Flyer I think that is really a sharp looking engine and I think it's interesting that they picked a 3000 to put that paint scheme on so that is really cool now all of these engines are going to have your standard control across the board. You're going to have Bluetooth control, Legacy, LCS. It's going to have rail sounds. It's going to have the new Lionel voice control as part of the new features on the Bluetooth app. So that's really cool. And uh, just like with the original run from 2009, it's going to have whistle steam, blowdown steam, and a swinging bell. So really... The new features on this are going to be mainly in some of the control systems. So this is mostly a straight re-release with a few other features. But if I was to order one of these, I would probably get the Valley Flyer one, simply because of a different splash of color. And I think it would look really cool alongside my original 3000. But I'll have to see what happens money-wise before I can commit to anything. But for now, let's just keep on going to... The USRA Pacifics, these are really cool. They've got six different paint schemes here. You've got Atlantic Coastline 1504, which is actually the one that's on display in Jacksonville, Florida. You've got Great Northern, Nickel Plate, Union Pacific, and Southern Pacific. And I actually really like the Nickel Plate one with the Buy War Bonds tender. That's pretty cool. So that's all I'm going to mention in terms of steam locomotives, at least for right now. So now we're going to move on to the scale diesel section. Starting off with what is personally the biggest letdown of this whole catalog, at least in my opinion, the SD70 ACE. We got one, one prototypical paint scheme out of all of these. 
And it's the Kansas City Southern Heroes Unit, number 4009. <sighs> I was personally really hoping for the Grand Trunk Heritage Unit from Canadian National. But, not right now. We got all of this instead. The only one that's close to a prototype is the Canadian Pacific one, and even then, that's an SD70 ACU, and this is an ACE. And, of course, the road number is different. But... You know, some people are excited about this. If I did have to pick a couple of favorites, I do like the Atlantic Coastline and the Monon one as well. Those are pretty cool. But probably not going to be ordering any of these engines. So moving on to the EMD GP30s. Now these are really cool. We've got a bunch of interesting paint choices here. You got Sioux Line 700, two BNSFs, a Santa Fe patch job and a, and a Burlington Northern patch job. And by the way, the Santa Fe patch job, number 2472, that was the only GP30 to be patched in such a manner where it actually said BNSF on the side and had the BNSF logo on the nose. So that's really cool that Lionel's chose to model that. You've got Chicago and Northwestern, two CSX variants, both of them patch jobs, a Chessie system and a Baltimore and Ohio. You've got two white Kansas City Southern ones, and then two Reading and Northern ones. So... Really good choices here. Lots of flavors of GP30s. Personally, I wish they would redo the high hood GP30s because I missed out on that run. I would really like to get the 2594 in my collection eventually, the Southern Railway one. But all in due time. Next up, the Veranda Turbines. Now, oh God, I got to clear the air with this. As a lot of you know, the a good chunk of the catalog was leaked. Pretty much all of this catalog got leaked. And when I first saw the verandas, and somebody told me about them, the first thing they said was, Lionel bought the MTH tooling! No. No, they didn't. These aren't MTH toolings. These are older Lionel toolings... Because they have done the veranda before, but it was several years ago. However, the changes that have been made is that the tenders all have a sound set in them now. They have a, a, a super bass sound system in them as well. Now, two of these paint schemes are only the ones that are accurate. The Union Pacific 61 and the Union Pacific 69, <laughs> nice, are the only two that are accurate. The rest of these, Alaska Railroad, Great Northern, Pennsylvania Railroad, U.S. Department of Defense, that's actually really cool, um, a Union Pacific Flag one, a Union Pacific Greyhound one, Denver and Rio Grande Western, and Southern Pacific, all of these are fantasy schemes. However, I think I actually like that Alaska Railroad one, personally. I know uh, I know Rich over at K&R Custom Models would certainly like that as well. I'm not sure if he would want to get it. But that's definitely up his alley, and I could certainly see a big veranda, you know, working hard up there in Alaska. So, it's pretty cool, actually. Next up is the EMD SW8 Switcher, and this is actually a brand new tooling. So, we've got New York Central, Conrail, Seaboard Coastline, Boston and Maine, Southern Pacific, Strasburg, uh, Coors Brewery, and Rock Island as well. And, uh... These are cool. I kind of like the Seaboard Coastline one personally, but probably not going to get any of these, at least not out of the gate. But what is cool is that they do have um, fixed pilots on these engines because it's a relatively small engine. So that is really cool. And they can operate on 031 curves, so very friendly to small layouts. Oh, man. 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 Guys. Let me tell you, when I got the leaks of the Acela in the catalog, I was immediately excited because the Acela has not been made since 2005. They tried to re-release it once, but because of the problems that happened with the initial release, they did not do it. And, you know, it really sucks because I like that train. I like it a lot. And this is going to be the last year that the Gen 1 Acelas are in service. So, you know, they're pretty much singing their swan song right now. But, not only is the Acela in the catalog, but we've got the concept Acela, the American Flyer. No, no, not the Gilbert trains. 
the original name for the Acela actually was the American Flyer. And this is actually what they've modeled down here on the bottom half of the page. You've got the prototypical Acela, and then you have the American Flyer. Personally, I really like the American Flyer, and if I do order an Acela, it will be this one, for sure. Because I really like it, because that is classic 90s Amtrak with modern flair to it. I love this train set a lot. But then on the next pages, we've got what everyone is talking about. The fantasy paint scheme of Cellas. And you know what? Whether you like them or not, you can't deny they're interesting. I personally think a lot of them are pretty fun. You got a New Haven one and a Milwaukee Road one here on this page. And then on the next page, you've got a Union Pacific one in the M10,000 scheme, which actually, that paint scheme works pretty well with the Acela, in my opinion. You've got a Pennsylvania Congressional Limited style one and a Santa Fe Warbonnet one. Now, uh, in terms of the Pensy one, personally, if I had been designing this set, I would not have put the power cars in that Tuscan paint scheme. I would have had them be the same color as the cars, or even better, have them be in the silver paint scheme of the GG1 that pulled the Congressional Limited, because I think that would have looked a lot better than what we've got here, but I digress, that's just me, I still think it's a cool idea. But, the Acelas are, are back, and let me say this, the Acela was cancelled the second time around because of lack of orders. If you guys want this train to get made, if you want any of these trains to get made, it is critical that you pre-order through your dealers, through your local hobby shops, through whatever. Because if you don't pre-order, this sucker won't get made. And I and a lot of other people really want the Acela to happen. So, get your orders in and keep your fingers crossed that this gets through this time and actually does not get cancelled. Because... I really want the Acela. Up next is a section that really took me by surprise, actually. You've got the John Bull, one of the original steam locomotives. Um, so the John Bull has been made before. It's nothing new. Um, however, what I really like, actually, is this one set on top called the Pennsylvania John Bull Display Set. And uh, I think this is when the Pennsylvania Railroad had the John Bull on exhibition or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, I really like the idea of having the John Bull on a flat car. And uh, to me, this makes it more practical for somebody who wants to tow it around their layout in a consist. Because the John Bulls, as they are, they do not have command control. They are just conventionally controlled. So... I don't even think you could even put like a mini commander board in there from the Electric Railroad Company because it's so small without doing some heavy modifications. So this is actually a really good idea for the John Bull in my opinion. So if I do order the John Bull, it will be the display set because I think that works really good and would be really cool to put into my Steam Era freight train consist. All right, that does it for locomotives. Now let's talk about rolling stock, starting with the Lionel Vision Line individual sale box cars. Now, normally when you get Vision Line box cars or sound cars, they're normally in a set with three cars. Kind of like, you know, the reefers, the stock cars, and the tank cars. But this is the first time they're doing individual sale cars. So, we've got Western Pacific, Maryland and Pennsylvania, or Ma and Pa, which I think is awesome. Uh, Missouri Pacific, Pennsylvania, Southern Pacific, and Baltimore and Ohio. Personally... Um, I like the Ma and Pa and the Missouri Pacific ones the most. You know, I think those are really cool. And I've actually seen a few Ma and Pa boxcars roaming around the country still. So they're very hard to find, but you can still find them. So I'm not sure if I'll get one of these. I've already got a lot of Vision Line sound cars in my collection. So I'm not sure, but we will certainly see. But if I did order one of these, it would either be the Ma and Pa or the Mopac. Up next is the standard O gondolas with ballast loads. There's one paint scheme that attracts me on this page, and that is that green Norfolk and Western Maintenance of Way one. Definitely am going to get that car for sure. I, yeah, I, I, I like that car. That's really cool. So, yeah, that's going on the list. Speeders. TMCC Speeders. They're back. 
and new paint schemes, and I'm actually going to get one of these too. Um, I actually, believe it or not, like that Penn Central one right there. So, you know, as much as I like speeders, I just don't have one for my layout. So I'm going to go ahead and get the Penn Central speeder. So, yeah, that's going to be cool. Next up, the Polar Express section, which, oh boy, this is going to trigger a lot of people. Yes, they did a Polar Express Acela as well, and uh, I actually like this one too, so. But, as much as I like it, these Acela sets are really expensive, so getting two Acelas, ugh, I'm not sure. But, I do have to admit, I really like the Polar Express theme to sell. I think that's cool. And finally, the last item of interest for me. The Amtrak 50th Anniversary 027 Boxcar. Yep, 2021 marks 50 years of Amtrak service across the United States. And, yeah, this is definitely going on the purchase list. I need this car in my collection. You know me, I love my Amtrak stuff. This is definitely going on the list. So, that does it with my personal highlights from the Lionel 2021 catalog. So, oh man, was this catalog good. So, what do you guys think? What are you guys going to get? Comment down in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys thought of this catalog. What do you guys think of all the hype that was built up for this catalog? I mean... Oh god, I've never seen leaks go so rampant with a catalog in my life. And that's not necessarily a good thing. You know, catalog leaks, they may be fun, but that's what gets hobby shops in trouble, and that's what gets dealers in trouble. That's also what could get Lionel in trouble, because that's how competition or bootleggers get a hold of the products before Lionel makes them and makes false copies. So... Think about that. But I digress. This was a great catalog. That's all I really have to say about it. And I've got a lot of thinking to do in terms of what I want to purchase from it. So I will see you guys in the next video and down the road. So leave your comments down in the comment section as always. And I will see you guys on the next podcast. And until next time, this is Ravenhawk6910 signing off.